Hello, and welcome to this latest in the series of the future of resourcing on HRTN via Annapurna HR. I'm Dee Dee Doak, editor of Recruiter Magazine and Recruiter.co.uk. And in this part of the series, we're talking with Ryan Broad, one of the most innovative heads of resourcing out there, most recently with the Moving Picture Company, associated with films like Life of Pi and Skyfall. With Ryan, we are going to be talking about the flexible workforce and the future of that in resourcing. And in Ryan's case, he's had lots of experience in working with the skilled flexible workforce. The idea that we have in our current company is we've got quite a lot of people, very talented individuals, who work on very, very specific projects. Um, their driver, if you want to call it, their motivation for them in order to, um, to keep improving themselves is to constantly work on more movies, more complex movies, um, you know, different technical shots, you know, higher grades of software that have a higher capability to deliver a better image, um, <clears throat> and ultimately. They'll work in a number of different companies as they as they kind of like pursue their career. Um, we're very fortunate to be one of the, you know, if you want to call it, top tier organisations that can sustain um, somebody's career. You know, we would like to think that we could sustain a career for life. Um, however, we're quite um, we're quite clear that it, it won't be f all the time. So we know that the, in our an artist or an employee will work with us for a certain period of time and then they'll go off and they'll pursue another opportunity with you know another company because uh, it could be anything because of the project that they're currently working on or because they wanted to get you know um, experience using a different software package um, it could also be as simple as you know their friends move and they kind of like they move themselves we just need to nurture that talent so we need to ensure that the artist experience as they kind of move through our facility is, you know, is A plus, that that artist gets the best support they can do, if anything that we can do with learning and development, um, all of the classes that we do you know, for, a, for a recent production uh, past, we've had artists actually go out and do martial arts courses, do fencing courses, biology courses, you know, which is just a bit different from the traditional, you know, if you want to call it, kind of art. Uh, elements or offerings that you would want to do but it's all it's all about trying to capture that realistic image because a lot of the stuff that we will have to reproduce has to be of such high quality one of the key things for us is always that we need to kind of if you want to go keep that person in the organization or offer them opportunities in the organization as much as, as best we can if I think about it from a context of you know how do you manage the kind of that creative pipeline uh, our artists are global, we're a very multinational company, you know, the talent that you'll want to try to get comes from four corners of the world, whether that be Australia, Asia, India, uh, is, is very much up and coming uh, at the minute in the market. Europe has always had a really strong presence. Um, the west coast and east coast of America, again, very strong heritage with regards to kind of visual effects and later so sort of Canada. How do we harness all of the people that we would want to engage with in a way that we can kind of almost share with them what we're doing, how we're doing it. Um, the premise is very much be part of creating something with us um, because as we kind of get onto it, you know, we are a social organisation. Even though we would be seen as a kind of tier one, uh, a tier one operator, I think the, the key thing comes around for us is kind of resourcing smart. The <coughs> mechanics of how you would engage your, your mobile workforce one is it, it has to be web enabled. Two, it has to have a social strategy or a plan of social, uh, how you're gonna get your messaging out from that. The, th the third point, which is kind of really important, is this, how, how do you, you know, what, what are you kind of gonna say when you want to say it? And one of the biggest le lessons that we've learned is it's about the content of what you've got as the hook is actually then gonna really get your credibility within your, within your social group. So we're quite lucky that we've got grade A content. It's you know it's quite relevant. It's the stuff that all of the guys in the company will produce, and it's world class, and it's the type of things that everybody will want to know how we've done it. They will they're always constantly up to date with the kind of the new techniques that are coming out, or how have we done a technique? You know sometimes they're overly critical. <laughs> sometimes it's not as great as it could be. Um, but having that content to be able to kind of pull somebody back in again. I think if you're looking at it in a context of you know kind of a small organisation who who may be thinking you know well 
you know, how do I make insurance sales sound like it's, you know, sexy, you know, how do I, you know, take, you know, ad operations in, a, in an online digital world and kind of like make it, make it fun to be there, you know, those are the questions you need to answer in order to kind of create your content because there will be content there that's relevant to the people, that's going to be important to those people um, that you'll want to kind of get out there. When you're thinking outside of the square, the content might not be 100% company related. And I think that's the other element to have a look at. The content, how you engage with the individuals, and if, if I even look at outside of my organisation, even within the industry that we've currently got, is that even, even a Twitter campaign nowadays isn't something that's kind of, um, how do you want to say it, spontaneous. You know, a lot of the communications are all planned and prepared. They're all typically scheduled through um, TweetDeck, Hootsuite, you know, any one of these types of messaging aggregator job boards. Mm -hmm. it, but it, it, which enables then it to be, you know, measured, tracked, you know, sent out at the right appropriate times whenever, you know, the guys are going to be most receptive to taking that call. And it is typically there in order to start to get some sort of response back. What we like to do is kind of like just get things out there that are fun, that are cool. You know, we had like a Pictionary Bond competition to do some stuff. Uh, we had to like draw a Bond and photograph it and send it in. And <clears throat> progressively, of the months of hundreds of people that kind of like sent in their invite or their competition increase, we didn't have a prize to win, but it was just he could get it. The quality went from Pictionary to near pitch perfect, you know. Um, and um, and that, that ourselves is just a fun, cool thing to do. It has to just resonate with people and they have to just go, that's cool. If I get something out and I know and we believe it and we've tried it and we've tested it, that if we can then kind of like have a schedule of comments or on a topic or here's an avenue that we want to kind of like take you down to kind of think differently or here's stuff that we need to help you with because it's better for you, and you almost kind of have that culture of communication, then it will get received a lot, in my view, is it gets received a lot better. Very early on when we started to use Hootsuite, because you can track your responses, um, a lot of the general adverts that we would put out to go apply here or click this or hire and now <clears throat> typically got a 90% less um, kind of hit rate than the ones that we did when we were like, wow, check this car blown up because it's a really good reference material, it's in like super slow-mo and it just looks awesome and, you, and, it's, and for us it's getting the content, that particular um, kind of breakdown of the slow motion the car building up really just it does appeal to all of the, the artists that are purely about destruction and they need reference material in order to imitate it. Take it back to the insurance company and what are they kind of doing that's actually really quite cool. You know, for me, it would always be like, how many customers have they got? What sort of funds have they, you know, got into, uh, got under management? How quickly do they do things? Well, you know, they, we always talk about co corporate social responsibility. Forget the corporate social responsibility piece. And you start highlighting what's right and what, why they do that and why people would value kind of work in there. Um, employer value proposition for me is always, um, I think it's been quite important, but it's, it's got too many corporate connotations to it. And it kind of almost misses out the people element to that world. I think the EVP should start with the people first. Uh, I stopped, stopped thinking about geography and regions with regards to my can talent pool uh, a couple of years ago because it was limiting the kind of one the service that we could do and how we would resource for it internally, how we would structure my team for it. And one of my biggest revelations was, you know, when we start to do, to do everything online and you've got a kind of global database that you're kind of building up, or contact base that you're building up, you know, at that point then the global element just disappears. The only thing that's kind of maybe holding you back, engaging them is the time zones, or talking to people is just the time zones. Then the other elements is just around identifying you know, who can work in which location because there's obviously a number of government regulations and there's all the visa elements that kind of go with that. Um, so again for us it was just kind of really important to understand where we could offer opportunities to people that they would be able to be eligible to be able to work in and then make sure that we can identify and talk to those guys and tell them exactly, you know, where, here's, where we, here's where you can, you know, here's where you've got the opportunities, they're relevant. You know, as we kind of open up and go sort of more globally um, mobile because we have a couple of We've got an opportunity, a big opportunity this year where we're investigating looking at another site in, in Canada. Um, and when that does get finalised, you know, the, the, 
the head start that we have is that we already know 22,000 people globally around the world. I already know the three or 4,000 people that we will be able to kind of get to. Um, hopefully if I've been able to do what we do right, um, is they'll know that we know where they are and they'll be pretty cool with that. And it's now just ensuring that we can make sure that we get the production schedules out to those guys so that then they can choose to kind of be part of MPC. It's not a global community, it is global, but it's local. It has, you have to have that local element to it because when you don't, it just becomes a hugely complicated to manage and you start to then start to look at regionally based teams and all that elements to that. And what I've tried to really do from a global, global perspective is just pull as much of that into being like a kind of core team and then just start to figure out how do we then get out to the business, which kind of then broadens that individual or that group of people's kind of competencies because they're not just doing stuff locally, they're doing it globally but they're still doing it with the same talent pool. I think as the generations are evolving, there is loyalty, but that loyalty is brand loyalty. So it's almost like who's cool to be with, the, the flavor of the month, you know, who's the guy you're listening to now, what are you wearing, you know, tomorrow, what trainers you kind of want to do, what bike we're going to ride, what color's in. You know, if you kind of start to look at how, you, if you want to call it generation Ys, and X's or millennials or whatever are kind of coming up is that they're, they're, you know, one, they're mobile, two, they're tech savvy, three, they're brand savvy. And if you compare that to, you know, what we have with the baby boomers is that, yeah, they were loyal, you know, <clears throat> but in a different context. So I don't think the, I don't think the principles have changed. I just think the, the contents of how they, people apply those principles has changed. So if you've got a, you know, a good brand, you know, with the, yeah, again, I we talk about corporate social responsibility, you know, like an organization that's kind of, you know, out there is respected, it's kind of well known, um, put something back, you know, it's kind of cool to be with, you know, it's almost the anti-corporate, you know, of most of, uh, most of societies, as you always kind of, I've always harped on even in my previous roles, you know, um, when, when we've, um, when I've worked in large corporates, it's always been there whether they don't want the corporate, they want the startup kind of mentality. And I think that's, um, that's something that, uh, that a lot of companies will kind of strive for. But the brand piece, you know, pull the brand piece back again. The brand piece needs to be segmented into understanding exactly what your value proposition is. You know, forget your salary. I, I would always say, you know, push, out, push out your salaries and training development, the cool place, the cool table, the, whatever you would have in the organization. Is really important, but it's not the it's not the hooking factor. What that person values, which will be multiple um, in that organisation, is what you should be focusing on. Find the values of the broadest possible sense, and use that as the basis of how you actually then put out or the themes of everything that you would want to put out in order to get your message across in a way that, that person's going to kind of like latch onto it. Once they engage with you, then the secondary piece is almost okay. Cool. If you want to consider this, because for me, the psychological contract means that they need to choose to be part of that organization. If they be part of that organization, everything else that a lot of companies push out as their value proposition then comes into action. But without that engagement or that, you know, that almost kind of inspiration of why somebody would go, oh, cool, they're like, they're okay, or I've been following them for a while and this stuff's really funny, or I really like that, or I want to be part of that, or that's me. Without that connection, you're never really going to be able to kind of pull them in and go, yeah, you've got a good salary, you've got this, you know, we've got development, you've got all the stuff that can help you out. Because that message gets lost with all of the other companies that are all doing exactly this. So the, the key thing that I've always got is respect. You know, you've got to be able to kind of respect that person's language. You know, but previously, we used to run a lot of um, hack days and we used to do them in, in Paris. And typically, with regards to the kind of, with the French culture, we were having a lot of Americans that were going to be there, very limited, uh, you know, native French speaking capabilities. However, you know, to be able to kind of go into a room and just, you know, to kick off in the local language, to be able to do the introductions, you know, to be able to excuse yourself to ensure that everybody knows that the main presentations are going to be in, you know, in, um, in going to be in English, um, that there's going to be French speakers that are going to be available for you to ask questions, you know, and then to always engage somebody within their, within their local element, that's kind of really that's kind of really important. The primary element to anything is just to kind of create a, to, to create a talent pool. How, how you do that through an ATS system or, you know, through some of the really smart stuff that's coming out from Hullaroo or from Adventure, that's, that's your kind of primary focus is to have that network. Secondary on top of that is to kind of then figure out how you're going to, what, 
where do you want to get your messages out to? So if you look at your, your social strategy, where are you going to get your messages out to? How are you going to get your messages out to everybody else? Because on certain elements, even a, a slide that I showed recently, I think had something like 70 different LinkedIn groups, and that was just one community that you want to kind of post to. So you, you think about it, your, if you want to call it tactically, how you're going to get all, the, all of your messages out to those, and you're going to measure them. And the measurement piece to me is actually even more important than actually finding the tools to do that, because if you don't understand the impact of what your messages have, what words that you're using, times a day that you're going to do that, then it is literally just like, well, we've got a social media strategy, here's a big pond, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna throw a stone in it. The next piece is then just really understand your people, you know, and understand them from a point of respect, not from a point that they're a candidate. The way that uh, the recruitment team and MPC, whenever we've got our community of artists, I mean, they're all part of the one family, even if they haven't worked with us previously or not, we're still keen to kind of have them because we know at some point, if we can make things work and it's right, then it then it works. Um, so I would I would definitely have a have a strategy around all of your um, communication and engagement that's built purely around respect. Um, and then the next piece that I would always have, which you which you built off that, is have some fun. Have some fun with the guys. Try some things that are just not norm not I would say not normal, but not normally done within a corporate company because your target audience might surprise you.